Congratulations on being the November Associate Spotlight for Adopio. So, how did how did you feel when you received the news? I was like very surprised, blown away, humbled, really, truly. Um, just you know, it's just an honor, but it's very, uh, very, very humbling to me. Jennifer, you provide Adopio, and how you your eagerness and ability and willingness to help goes so far and it's especially when I'm so far away that to have you there you know in times when it's challenging or I need something you immediately offer your help and I just can't emphasize how much I appreciate it. As we get started can you tell us a little bit about who Jennifer Hawthorne is? Well this December my husband and I will celebrate our 41st wedding anniversary Um, That amazes me. We started life in a very unique way, I think. Our first home was actually a huge canvas tent. We lived in that for about four months. We had, you know, sleeping bags and suitcases, a dog, a Coleman stove. Of course, I was very young and, you know, not a clue and I guess adventurous maybe. We graduated from that and went into a 35-foot fifth-wheel trailer, like an RV, and that became our home for the next four years. We traveled around out west and uh, where my husband worked, and we had been married less than a year. So when he took this job, I said, I did not get married to stay at home in a white house with a white picket fence. So if we're going to do this, we're going to do this together. And You know, he went to exciting places to work and Moab, Utah and West Yellowstone and, you know, all out west. We did that for four years in uh, 84 is when we came to Little Rock and have been here ever since, of course. And Little Rock is does feel like home. We've planted a lot of roots here and it is home to me now. Where do you of all the places that you visited? Was there anyone, any place in particular that? loved more than the others we just we just kind of fell in love with Moab and this was before it got real commercialized with the biking but at the time it was just I mean there was not even a McDonald's in Moab Utah it was just it was just beautiful to go you know looking for arches and hiking Dead Horse Point and there would be a, a bunch of us like gals and all of us had dogs and we would just take off and take the dogs and go hiking and go playing. And that's the days that I learned to make homemade bread. And I made homemade bread almost every other day and cookies and, you know, just baked all the time, cooked all the time, did macrame and cross stitch. And so we came here in 84 and my husband and his crew were responsible for starting the first air ambulance program here in Little Rock with Baptist Hospital. One of the pilots that he worked with introduced him to fly fishing and fly tying and the whole bit. And we came here, there wasn't really a fly shop. And he decided that's what he wanted to do was open a retail fly fishing business there. We owned the business from 88 to 2008. Um, He sold it, but he's still involved. Tell me, um, do you have a favorite quote? Anything that you live by? Our women's small group was discussing servant leadership, and one of the girls shared something that she had recently heard. I have no idea who said this, where it came from, but it had really resonated with me. Be the person that puts the wind in someone else's sail, and that is the person I want to be. So what do you like to do in your free time? I do like to read a kind of a great novel just to kind of maybe, you know, get away and rest my mind and all. And uh, Louise Penny and the Inspector Gamache series is one of my favorites. And then I really like um, David Baldacci. I love to talk to my sister over the on the phone. She's in North Carolina. I don't get to see her a whole bunch. I really miss her. I like to go on walks and just spend time with friends. If there was one thing that was impossible to give up, what would that be? <laughs> it would be my OCD. <laughs> I don't know how I would function. <laughs> Can you give me an example of some of your OCD ticks? So the dish towel hanging on the wherever, whether it's the oven or the 
dishwasher handle. It's got to be straight, perfect, no tag showing. Everything just has to be in place. Nothing, nothing out of place at the house. And my husband, bless his heart, he will go do the shopping. He loves it and he does great. And he comes home and he puts everything away. And I have to go in there and rearrange it and put it exactly where it's supposed to go. Things like that. <laughs> everything has its place. I was going to ask you if there was anything since, you know, obviously we're all remote now, but while we, when we were in the office, was there anything that just set you off or that you always had to make sure was just, just right at the office? Oh, yeah, the snacks in the snack drawer needed to be, you know, as perfect as possible and arranged in the right way. And the inventory room, I like it to be. So when we get it, you know, our ship, our items in and I get them all checked in and it's just really a challenge to kind of see if I can make them neat and all stacked and sometimes I can't I've had to let that go a little bit but it <laughs> drives me crazy <laughs> so what would you consider your most defining moment I spoke at my and felt led to speak at my mother-in-law's memorial service in 2010 my mentor was there. Afterwards, she just was very, very encouraging about, you know, she kept saying, wow, you know, you had command of the room, you made him laugh. And, and she herself is a writer and a teacher and a speaker. She's written curriculum that I've studied. I couldn't believe that she was saying those things, but she encouraged me to explore that. And it wasn't long after that, that I was teaching and speaking in a prison in Pine Bluff for women. I had contacts in the Wrightsville unit, which is right outside of about 20 minutes outside of Little Rock on the way to Pine Bluff. We started going there and that was going really well uh, until the of course, till the pandemic hit. Yeah, so that's been kind of hard, you know. You have no control over and you have to... You have to do hard to things. Just, mm -hmm. And well, what a wonderful thing it'll be to be reunited again, you know, after yeah. all that time. So I look forward to it, whenever it might be. <laughs> so if you could spend one day with anyone in the world, who would that person be? Or people? You can have more than one. I just hate to just limit it to one person. Yeah. Well, this may be a little bit strange, but I would give anything in the world. To have a day with my mom and daddy again. Um, they were wonderful, wonderful people. And I would take this time to encourage anyone, if your parents are still alive, engage with them, get to know them. Do you know their struggles? Do you know their heart? Do you know their story? If you don't, now's the time to do it. If you had one core message to the world, what would it be? We are all created on purpose, for a purpose that is far bigger and better than ourselves. And I would, I would tell the world to seek God for that purpose and then do it. There's nothing better. It brings him glory. It brings your soul such joy. And then it helps the needy people of this world. So how do we achieve that? How do we do we, do we just pay better attention? Do we sit quietly? How do we find that? that um... those, those are great ways. The thing that helped me was actually a study called Embracing Purpose. This one actually gives you self-discovery exercises to do along the way. You know, not everybody that takes that finds their purpose, but starting point is just what what do you enjoy what do you enjoy doing what are you good at it's who you were created and designed to be as we know quarantine can be a sign uh, can be a time of self-reflection um, that being said is there anything that you could share with the listeners to that that you've experienced I think what I realized is that I've taken um, community for granted 
love to be able to hug on my friends now when I see them or um, I went to see the mentor I talked about earlier last Saturday and it's the first time I've seen her. We've talked a little bit over the phone and stuff, but it's the first time I've seen her and walk in and give her a big old hug. And of course, you know, she's being very careful. And so we social distanced, but we still had a, you know, a great visit, but missing that so much, the the community aspect. Realize I just don't think we were ever meant to to do life on our own. And this is a great reminder that that we're not still an aspect of it that's just different. Where I am in my season of life, that's what stood out to me is how much I've taken that for granted and how much I miss that. Everyone at Adopio has a story. So would you share with us yours, please? Yes. So I knew that it was time for me to leave my previous job. I've known Keith and Robin for many years, but I kept feeling this nudging to reach out to Keith just to see if there was any openings um, that might fit me at Adafio, and but I kept ignoring those mostly out of fear. I had interviewed with Keith and Jana. Now it's been three years ago when I came in April of 2019. It had been a couple years, and I just kept thinking I uh, probably you know miss my opportunity. I just miss my opportunity. This just has to be divine because there's no other way to express it. I'd been to my mentor's house and told her about the nudging and the fear. Yeah. And we had talked about that, you know, and she said, you just, you just got to call and ask, you know, you're getting nudged for a reason. And I left her house and I was going over to the fly fishing store that I mentioned where my husband is. He had asked me, this was a Friday afternoon at two o'clock. And he asked me to come by and pick up something at the store for him and and take it to the house after I got finished, you know, with my friend and mentor. And I said, sure. It was around two o'clock. I left there. I went to the store and I walked in and there was Keith talking to my husband. And I was like, "Mm -mm, this can't be. And Robin was out in the car waiting for him. So I went out and started talking to her and my heart's just beating 90 to nothing. And I keep wanting to ask, but I keep stuffing in it. And then finally, finally, I just told her what was going on. I told her about the situation that I knew I needed to leave. And she knew all about that job and everything. And then she said, oh, we got to ask Keith. We got to tell Keith this. And he had come out of the store, was in the car, was on the phone. She waited till he got off the phone and she started to say something. And I kind of cut her off and just blurted it out. And sure enough, then he said, wow, I can't believe this. So anyway, he called Amy. Amy called me. I interviewed with with Hutch and Amy and the rest is history because here I am. (laughs) That is awesome. I I love when things, when stars align or that synchronicity. (laughs) And I think it's because you're paying attention how you were thinking about it. And then she says, well, it's obvious that you need to pick up the phone and call, but then how everything just sort of fell together without much force. Yes. Just like speaking and because you put it out there when you speak about <laughs> it or think about it. So I guess that's why we shouldn't worry. We need to think positively about things, not necessarily repress, but always try to think about opportunities and ways that we can, um, as you say, bring the wind into other people's <laughs> sales because it obviously works. You gave some wind in his sale too. And, and into Adafios as well. Well, thank you. I, I know that I think I'm getting the biggest blessing by being here. So this uh, reminded me when we were talking about the Keith and I felt that was divine. There was another thing. My husband and I do not have any biological children, but we have what we consider our God given child. I actually met her when I was um, doing my work inside the prison. I would call it the most beautiful and most challenging relationship. And then when I thought about that, and even as I was thinking through the questions, what hit me is, well, that's parenthood, isn't it? In a nutshell, we feel really blessed. I always say if anybody ever wants to hear the full story, because it's an amazing story, if anybody ever wants to hear that, I'm always happy to share it the way that it happened. It wasn't something I was looking for. It wasn't something I ever thought would ever happen or that I would ever really feel like or 
or be a mom. And this has been just really, really different. And yeah. and again, just what a what a real joy it is to be a part of the bigger Adopt a Young team. Yeah, it, it's such a beautiful community of people. <laughs> it and is. They they bring the humanity into a technology, you know, <laughs> wired, hardwired, you know, world that we we still emulate such humility. I agree, absolutely. Well, Jennifer, thank you again, and congratulations again on November Spotlight of the Month. Okay, we'll talk. Right. Bye. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.